Because he's been a fisherman all his life, has worked from past Midway all the way down past South Point in the other direction, and is very intimate with the Kule and uh, Hawaiian fish, and I thought that it would be appropriate for him to share his uh, one hour with us today. I'll try to tell you some of the events that have occurred that got me interested in conservation. The new technology, new nets, invisible uh, nylon and so forth, uh, is really uh, something that can overcatch quickly. That's why you have what you call sport fishing. You're a sport man. You're one man, one fish, one hook. But when you're taking massive amounts of it, uh, that's not considered sport. So the tales we had heard were true. There was a large school of what we call boy, and uh, you can see that, I think, at the Waikiki Aquarium, they're big fish, and they were prized fish, they're reserved for the king only, like uh, reserved for the high chief, and um, we caught it, of course, put it on the plane, sent it here, and it caused a little bit of excitement because you couldn't find that fish here. It had been fished out. So when I got there, I thought, my God, this is Nirvana. I found some place where I can fish for a long time. Well, I had the wrong idea because in the time I spent there, it wasn't very long until the supplies from the shore fishery to the offshore to the depths and finally into the Pelagics way offshore was less and less. You sit out there hour after hour waiting to catch uh, some fish, you begin to evaluate what are you doing. And the local DLNR, Department of Land and Resources, sent a scientific group out there and they measured the nutrients in the water along these volcanic protrusions from the bottom of the ocean, these atolls, and they found out that we have very little nutrient out there in that place where you might think it's like Alaska, it would go on forever, but no, it didn't. But I thought it all over and what was happening and the money that we were spending chartering aircraft and all of this. Um, I started my big engine in my boat and headed back to Honolulu 90 degrees from out there. I never looked back and I never went back. Those fish out there have the same DNA as here. No one there to interfere with the spawning, which we do all the time. Like when I was catching our coolie, uh, we put a net around it, and we would be taking in the net. We'll take the mature, the big bar, our coolie. We take the ma'au, the medium size, and we take the halalu, the baby size. So that's sort of inefficient because the next season, that fish that is supposed to mature in that catch is not there for you to catch. So sometimes it's hard to explain this to people that don't want to hear it. So when I came back, I changed my operation. And uh, if I went out for school in Wakuli, I'd use my big size net and the medium, medium size. I really could escape the baby size all of them could escape. So I, I worked with a group of people who, one person particularly, her name was Stephanie Free. She uh, had uh, contact from previous conservation undertakings with the White House. We were going to make the area safer for, for less fishing and make it into a reserve. President Clinton signed that measure in 1999, as I remember. President Bush, when he got into office, decided he wanted to improve on President Clinton's designation, so he made it a monument. And um, the fish that are spawned there of the same DNA as here have a chance to drift down in the water column as recruits and fall out of the water column around these islands and they help replenish this supply here. It's, it's something that's not sustainable. You can't
cannot, with the techniques today, uh, control the harvesting. Limited habitat around Atoll and the coral, which is the beginning of the fish chain, producing algae with the sun, is eaten by the smaller fish, and then the bigger fish eat that, and the biggest predator eats that. So we don't have the space to begin with. So I would say, don't try to do it. Just leave it be and let nature take its course. So that's what I found out. And I would tell anyone, don't try to do what I did. Thank you for the occasion to talk to you about it and why it was done and why today and now it's the World Heritage Site. And I've always felt that with the eyes of the world on the place as a world resource, be better than not to have that protection. That's what's happened there. Thank you, Wilson.